hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your boy mike uh it's been a minute but we're back and today we got another reaction we have another larry bird reaction for all you larry bird fans today we have larry bird's most savage moments i'm so interested in seeing what this video has uh crazy crazy i reacted to I don't know what was the name of the video, but it was, uh, um, I think it was a mixtape, one of his highlight videos that was great. Um, he was one of the greatest players of all time, one of the greatest NBA players. Um, great passer, dribbler, great play overall. So uh, today we're just going to react to Savage Moments, okay? So let's go ahead and check it out. A part of the reason why Larry Bird was called legend was his brilliance as a basketball player. And the other part were his legendary and vicious trash talking skills. Bird was a killer on the court. Yeah. yeah, I heard about the trash talk, but I haven't yet reacted to any of his trash talks. I, I just heard that, you know, there was this game where he went on and said he's going to play. And sh I think he says he was going to play the whole game with his left hand or something like that. And he just kept on scoring with his left hand, you know, shooting with his left hand. That was amazing. And another thing is that I heard that, you know, whenever he would trash talk, he would actually try to back it up. So he would. So that, that's amazing, though, you know, seeing someone trash talk, say, they, say something they, you know, they'll do and then they end up doing it. You know, that's, that's amazing. He had a foul mouth and he wasn't afraid of anybody. This explosive combination gave birth to some of the most ruthless trash talking stories in NBA history. So here are the 10 best Larry Bird savage moments. 1988 three-point shooting contest. The three-point shot in the NBA was first introduced in the 1979 NBA season, Larry's rookie year. Seven years later, at the 1986 All-Star Weekend in Dallas, the NBA brought the first official three-point shooting contest to the scene. Larry won it and repeated next year at the All-Star Game in Seattle. In 1988, he was going for a three-peat in Chicago. Before the start of the contest, Bird entered the locker room, did not speak a word to the other competitors, and just took a good look at him. He finally said, I'm just looking which one of you is going to come in second. The room was filled with silence because they- That's crazy, wow. His confidence was, you know, through the roof. That's just crazy, right? Man, hey, if you can back it up, why not? You know, that's, that's cool. They all knew what kind of a shooter Bird was. Of course, Larry would go on to win again, proving that he's the best shooter in the world. He won without taking off his tracksuit, famously raising his hand while the contest clinching three was still in the air. Response to Craig Hodges Craig Hodges was one of the best shooters in the 80s, and he competed in the three-point shooting contest with Larry each time Bird was participating. Larry won three times, and Craig finished second twice. When Hodges finally took home the title of the best three-point shooter at the All-Star Weekend in 1989, reporters asked him if the main reason for his victory was Bird's injury and non-participation. Craig said, Larry knows where he can find me, and Bird replied, I know where, at the end of the Chicago Bulls bench, the left-handed game. Larry Bird was in the prime of his basketball brilliance in the 85-86 86 season when he led the Celtics to the title. They lost only one game at home throughout the season and the playoffs, setting an NBA record with 50 and 1. The Portland Trailblazers were the only team to defeat the Celtics at home in December, so they were a good bet to win in front of their crowd in February. Before the game, Bird surprised his teammates and journalists by saying that he would shoot all his shots with his left hand, except long jumpers. This was the last game of a long road trip. Larry would always find new motivations and challenges to get through the monotonous grind of the regular season. In the game against Portland, he'd go on to have one of the most memorable games of his career. He hit a shot to send the game to overtime and then hit a game winner in the OT. Bird finished the game with 47 points, with 14 rebounds and 11 assists. He scored 22 points with his left hand out of sheer boredom and fun, which tells you how- That is crazy, especially if you're not left-handed. Just imagine doing that. Oh, man insanely good and confident this guy was. White guys guarding him. Larry is not white. Larry is clear, said Bill Murray in Space Jam, while explaining Bird's ethnicity to Michael Jordan. Larry Bird had skills for days. He was thinking the game three moves in advance, and his jump shot was money. He was nimble at six foot nine, but he wasn't by any means an athletic player. Bird suffered from WMCJ syndrome, which stands for white men can't jump, and he was aware of it. 
On one occasion, he called basketball a black man's game due to the natural ability and athleticism of African-American players. Because of that, he hated when the opposing teams would defend him with another white guy. Bird said that it was disrespectful to his greatness because he was dropping 30 and 40 on the most athletic players in the league. So if you put an unathletic white guy on him, that's barbecue Which is a crazy thing because to me, so far, I mean, I'm not, I don't really know a lot about Larry like that, but just from what I've seen, it seemed like he was pretty athletic, especially being 6'9". Like, come on, what else, what else do you expect, you know? He moved great. He his dribbling was on point. You know, you need some athleticism to dribble. You know, and his passing was on point. His game IQ, his movement off and on the ball was great. So I mean, I'm just saying. Chicken right there in the trainer's lap. The highest scoring game in Larry Bird's career came in the 1986 season in a game against Dominique Wilkins in the Atlanta Hawks. At the beginning of the first quarter, it was obvious that Larry is in the zone. He'd hit everything he threw to the basket, with the announcers repeatedly saying they were watching the greatest shooting exhibition in basketball history. Bird scored 60 on 61% shooting and 15 of 16 on free throws, hitting ridiculous shots over several players. During the game, he suddenly said, in the trainer's lap, to Hawks players, which meant he would try to make a three from the corner near the opposing bench. He got the ball, made the shot, and one Hawks player who tried to guard him tripped over and fell exactly into the trainer's lap, just like Bird predicted. The Hawks bench was so amazed that they were laughing and high-fiving each other, totally perplexed by Bird's brilliance. After that, they were fined by their coach Mike Fratello for cheering on the opposing player, tormenting Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman was one of the best defenders in NBA history, with quick feet, long arms, and a motor that never shut down. He was a pest, an annoying pest, who never stopped guarding, provoking, and getting into everybody's face. And he used to be a nightmare for scorers around the NBA. However, when he was just starting out, he needed to get some schooling from Bird. After Larry scored four consecutive shots over Rodman, he opened his mean mouth and started destroying Rodman. Bird started yelling at Rodman's coach, Chuck Daly. Who's guarding me, Chuck? Is anyone guarding me? You better get someone on me or I'm gonna go for 60. Even though Rodman was almost moment of schooling right there. Super glued to him in an effort to deny him the ball, Bird was at his sarcastic best. I'm open. Hurry up before they notice nobody is guarding me. Merry effing Christmas. 1990. Larry Bird loved to play against the Indiana Pacers, where he was always greeted as a king. It was where the hick from French Lick grew up, made his first basketball steps, and took Indiana State University to the 1979 NCAA Finals. And the game Boston played against the Pacers played on December 26, 1990, will forever be etched in memory of the Pacers shooting guard, Chuck Rifleman Person. Before the game, Person said to the reporters, Rifleman is in the building, and I'm going bird hunting today. At the tip-off, Bird replied to Person that he has a Christmas present waiting for him. While Chuck sat on a bench during the game, Bird received the ball in the corner and shot a three-pointer. As the ball was flying towards the basket, Bird turned to Person and said, Merry effing Christmas. The ball, of course, came in without touching the rim, torching the Suns' bench. That's some Steph Curry shit right there, you know. He just threw that, shot that, turned around. Merry Christmas. The best teams in the NBA often coast through the regular season and can lose their edge and focus when playing against mediocre opponents. In one game against the Phoenix Suns, the Celtics lost a double-digit lead and were trailing by two in the final seconds. The Celtics had the possession, and they could tie the game and go to overtime or win it with a three. Larry knew his Celtics shouldn't be losing a game to the Suns, and he wanted to play no overtime. So he went to the Suns' bench and told all the players and coaches what was about to happen. Yeah, I'm going to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. Unsurprisingly, he lived up to his word. As the ball was still in the air, he turned towards the Phoenix bench and yelled, told you so, as the ball was going through the net. Calling his shot against Xavier McDaniel. Xavier McDaniel was one of the most notorious NBA players in the 80s. And on the courts, he liked to get physical like Olivia Newton-John. When he was playing for the Sonics and the Knicks, nobody was really messing with X-Man. 
However, Bird was not afraid of a scuffle, and there are multiple stories of Larry participating in bar fights during his NBA career. In a crowded Supersonics arena, Boston and Seattle played a close game tied just 10 seconds before the end. At that point, Celtics coach Casey Jones called a timeout, and Bird confidently told him to just give him the ball and that the others move the hell out of the way. On his way back to the floor, Larry said, that's exactly where I'll get the ball, and I'll score the game winner in your face, while X-Man replied, I know you will get it there, I'm waiting for you. Bird received the ball right where he said he would and made a tough fadeaway shot. After Bird realized there were still two seconds left, he told McDaniel, damn, I didn't want to leave two seconds on the clock, while X-Man walked back to the Sonics bench in disbelief, tormenting a young Clyde Drexler. Before Clyde Drexler came into the NBA, he was one of the best players in college basketball, forming the famous Phi Slamma Jamma with Hakeem Olajuwon at the University of Houston. Drexler was selected by the Blazers with the 14th pick in the 1983 NBA draft, and even as a rookie, he was already one of the most athletic guys at his position. However, Bird wasn't impressed. When Drexler subbed in the game against the Celtics, he started guarding Bird. Larry smiled at him and mockingly said, you can't stop me, you're a rookie, you don't know anything. He would proceed to hit jump shot after jump shot over Drexler before the Blazers coach had mercy on him and subbed him out, while Bird was laughing at Clyde on the way to the bench. Legend, that's all I can say, man. You know, when you have the skill to back it up, man, you just got the confidence. So he just went out there, said what he was going to do, and he just did it, you know. He was a great player all around, great, you know. Um, and I really enjoyed the video. Uh, I really enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. You know, if you did, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment down below what you guys want to see me react to next, you know, be it basketball or whatever, you know, just go ahead and comment that down below. Any suggestions, any tips, you know, uh, whatever you guys want to comment down, let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, peace out.